Ciao, mabuhay. You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. Today is the third Sunday in Ordinary Time, which in the Philippines is celebrated as the Feast of the Santo Niño. The devotion to the child Jesus is a mark of Philippine Catholicism. In fact, during his pontificate, Innocent XIII approved the special liturgical texts for the Santo Niño's feast day. Today, the Gospel is from St. Mark. Here, Jesus was indignant at his disciples for preventing the children from coming to him. Jesus then embraced the children and blessed them, placing his hands on them. The Feast of the Santo Niño is an opportune time for us to reflect on our attitude towards children, the most vulnerable in society. To our younger friends, do we like to come to Jesus for His blessing? To those of us who are older, are our ways leading or preventing the youth from desiring to know Jesus? May each of us look at God's kingdom with wonder, sincerity, trust, and gratefulness as a child would look at the most beautiful gift. Happy Feast Day! First Reading a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as men make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The Word of the Lord. Salvation. 
Second reading, a reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the Beloved. Therefore, I too, hearing of your faith in the Lord Jesus and of your love for all the holy ones, do not cease giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones. The Word of the Lord. Welcome vulnerability. In our world today, vulnerability, being helpless, is not considered a virtue. In fact, we try to impart, even to our young people, to be strong and to appear strong and never to show any sign of weakness. But on this feast of the child Jesus, the Santo Nino, the enduring symbol of the presence of the Christian faith in the Philippines, we are invited to rediscover the vulnerability of the child Jesus and the vulnerability of many, many other children of God. In the first reading from the prophet Isaiah, we are brought back to that moment where the kingdom of Judah, the southern part of the kingdom, was in trouble. It was a moment of vulnerability. There were many other kingdoms and kings surrounding Judah. And uh, they were trying to form alliances among themselves in order to threaten Judah. And so the king of Judah also tried in their vulnerability to forge alliances with whoever, with whomever would guarantee its strength. They did not want to appear vulnerable to the other leaders. And so the temptation was, be strong, be strong by forging alliances with other kings. Unfortunately, this attitude led them to even doubt 
the power of God. We would have thought that in their vulnerability, they would call on God. They would depend on God. The vulnerability of a child that would cling to God the Father. But it did not happen. Judah preferred to depend on other kings. And it brought disaster, not life. In the midst of that vulnerability, the prophecy was made. A child will be given to you. A child will be born. For kingdoms who want easy solutions, they would say, what help would that child give us? But the promise was that through this child, God will reign. And his kingdom through David's line will be vast. And it will be a kingdom of justice coming from a child, a vulnerable child given by God who is powerful. And this vulnerable child will restore the peace, the justice, the tranquility that they have been longing for. They have to accept their vulnerability, rely on God and the gift of God. And the question is, will Israel, will their kings take the path of vulnerability that will lead them to depend on God and the gift of this child? That is a question that they should have asked before and even up to now, all of us should ask that. In our moments of vulnerability, will we welcome that vulnerability as an occasion to trust in God? In the second reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, that child is given a name, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ truly became a child. You know, he was born as a baby. The Son of Man became vulnerable. The Son of God became vulnerable as a child, born of woman and born in a manger. Now this child, who is truly the Son of God, now gives us a share in all the spiritual blessings in the heavens, especially the blessing of becoming adopted sons and daughters of God. Look at that. Jesus' greatest legacy to us is a share in his sonship. We become adoptive children of God in Jesus. That's what he shared with us. And we should be grateful to, to God. And St. Paul prays that we will not waste that gift, that we would come to realize the riches of the hope offered to us in becoming adoptive children of God. Now, that means also becoming vulnerable, like Jesus, the child, vulnerable before God, and being vulnerable to each other strengthening each other by the strength of God. Are we willing to do that? We who are baptized as children of God, does that grace of baptism make us welcome vulnerability so that we could depend on God in Jesus Christ? This is an important question on this feast of the vulnerable child, the Santo Niño.
the proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. And people were bringing children to him that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me, do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord Welcome Vulnerability On this feast of the child Jesus, the Santo Nino, the icon of the faith in the, the Philippine Islands, we want to reflect on vulnerability. Vulnerability which is rejected by our world today, our world that makes a, a strength from which ever source some sort of a, an idol, a god, a goal to be aspired for. In the first reading, a vulnerable people turned to alliances with the powers of this world, kingdoms, in order to preserve you know, its strength. Rather than accepting their vulnerability and relying on God, after all, they are God's people. But no. They did not want to welcome their state of vulnerability and they drew strength from other kings and weapons of war. But it did not bring them strength. It led to their disaster. The prophecy was the gift of a child. This vulnerable child given by God will restore peace through justice, and his dominion will be vast from the line of David. In the second reading, St. Paul identifies who this child is, Jesus. Jesus who shares with us his being son of the Father through our adoptive childhood. So each one of us especially those who are baptized. We are children of God in Jesus, who is the true child, the Son of God. But part of this legacy is accepting our dependence on God. To be a child, warding off all pretensions of strength and relying on God the way Jesus did. And with Jesus' reliance on God, look at the power that he experienced. He was raised from the dead. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. The vulnerable one is reigning, and he shares that with us, that blessing with us. If only we would also welcome vulnerability in order to be strong in God through Jesus. In the gospel, oh, we have this beautiful but also r rather sad, sad episode. People were bringing their children to Jesus so that Jesus might touch them. This is an act of blessing. Most likely, it was the fathers of these children who brought their children to Jesus. It was the custom at the time that the father was the spiritual leader in the family. It was the father who led the prayers. It was the father who must look after the children in their spiritual growth also. So this act of the fathers bringing their children to Jesus was an admission that their children are helpless are vulnerable. They needed the blessing of God through holy people, through uh, teachers. And so this was an act of faith based on an embrace, a welcome of vulnerability. We need God's blessing, a beautiful act. 
Unfortunately, and this is the sad part of the story, the disciples of Jesus prevented the fathers from bringing their children to Jesus. This caused the indignation of Jesus. And I can understand. Now we are on the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Mark. And a chapter earlier, Mark 9, Jesus saw the disciples discussing among themselves, who is the greatest among us? Their mentality was greatness, superiority. Who would, who would occupy the seats of honor and power? And Jesus already told them, be like children. And whoever welcomes a little child, vulnerable child, welcomes me. So Jesus identifies himself with the vulnerable children. A chapter later, the disciples had not learned their lessons. They were preventing the children from coming to Jesus. And so Jesus reaffirmed the teaching. Let them come to me. Do not prevent the vulnerable from expressing their need for the power of God. So he took them. He embraced them. He blessed them. And then he told the disciples, and he tells us, no, unless you receive the kingdom of God like a child, you will have no part of it. So welcome vulnerability in others, in yourself. And let this be an occasion to turn to the real power who is in God through the hands of Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, our world is getting destroyed by false sense of power. No one wants to be vulnerable. And instead of saying, let us stop this madness, we are destroying ourselves, we are destroying each other. We rely on weapons. We rely on the power of money, of influence. And what's happening? Is the world more peaceful? Is there more fraternity? On this feast of the Santo Nino, let us make a promise. We will see in Jesus the vulnerable one. And we welcome his vulnerability. And we welcome our share in that vulnerability. And it will open our eyes to welcome those who are also helpless, so that with them, we approach Jesus. Let us sit on his lap. Let us enjoy his embrace and his blessing. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. On the feast day of the Santo Nino, let us reflect on how people reacted or responded to Jesus when he was still a child. We tried to gather some reactions from the Gospels, and we invite you to reflect on those that resonate with you. This is the first installment of our four-part series. First, John, who would become the baptizer, responded with joy. His mother Elizabeth said he leapt in her womb upon hearing the voice of Mary who was carrying Jesus in her womb. Does Jesus' word make you leap for joy as well? Do you feel joyful before him? who is truly present in the Blessed Sacrament? If yes, how can you share that joy with others? John shared his joy by preparing Jesus' way, even gladly directing his own disciples to Jesus. If no, try to remember the first time you heard of Jesus. What was your reaction at that time? 
Remembering our first encounter with Jesus would help us reflect on how our relationship with Him has evolved. The risen Lord Himself reunited with His disciples in Galilee, where He first called them. Next, the Magi, having seen His rising star, reacted with excitement. They wanted to see the child Jesus, so they went to the palace of Herod. Does the prospect of meeting Jesus excite you? Do you seek Him out? Where do you encounter Him? The Magi first looked for Him at the wrong place, but it did not stop them from searching until they finally found Him. Pray for the grace of finding Jesus, the true King. If like Herod and the scribes, we feel indifferent or even threatened, let us scrutinize such feelings. What makes us look at Jesus as a threat? Why do we lack interest in Him? Our current lifestyle? Our frustrations? We pray for clarity and courage to let go of that which prevents us from welcoming Jesus. Lastly, for this episode, we turn to the reaction of Anna, the prophetess, present during Jesus' presentation in the temple. Thankful for having seen the child Jesus, Anna told everyone that the Messiah they had been waiting for was now in their midst. Are we thankful that Jesus indeed came for us? We profess this every time we say our creed. In Anna's reaction, brothers and sisters, we realize that a person thankful to God also testifies to God's faithfulness to His people. So on the feast day of the Santo Nino, let us learn from the reactions of John the Baptist, the Magi, and the prophetess Anna to the child Jesus. Santo Nino, may we welcome you with joy, excitement, and thankfulness. Amen. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, do we feel tenderness towards vulnerable people? Tayo ba ay nakakaranas ng pagdamay sa mga mahihinang tao? The second point is, do we accept our own vulnerability? Tinatanggap ba natin ang ating sariling karupukan? Heavenly Father, you have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people, so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed.
ibaling sa kalangitan Purihin ang Diyos ng buhay, tayo kanyang mahal Inaaruga na tinagigil Pag-ibig niya ay kailangan